Hi everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be breaking away from my normal routine. I'm doing this for my English class, and the subject is actually food. It will be in podcast format. What better way to discuss feminism than with food? And to be honest, this will sort of give a little background of who I am and why I believe what I believe. Now on with the show. I am sure we have all heard the sexist phrase, a woman's place is in the kitchen, and I have no doubt that in the 1950s it was largely thought of as the case. Growing up, though, the phrase never really made any sense. Even with growing up in the 80s, being familiar with slogans from Where's the Beef to "Uh Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. With that being said, let's start the story out with a cliché. I grew up in Montana with humble beginnings, poor, and my parents were very traditional. My mom stayed home while my dad worked. And because of the circumstances, my father quite literally had to hunt for a lot of our food. I grew up on venison, something my mother actually detests to this day, having eaten it day after day for the majority of my youth, with the occasional treat of elk, or the even rarer treat, beef. So who do you think cooked after my father got done hunting? The answer might surprise you, as the answer is both. This is why the phrase, a woman's place is in the kitchen, has always confused me growing up. If someone would have told me a woman's place is in the kitchen back then, I would have given them a look that might resemble a child sucking down a lemon head. Yes, I understand where the stereotype came from, but didn't make any sense as my life up to that point wasn't relatable to the given phrase. And I'm not going to lie, it's funny to get a rise out of people by saying it sometimes, but quite honestly, I have always thought of cooking as a life skill and not a woman's job nor a man's job, but just something necessary for survival. It was just something my parents believed was a necessary skill and since we were poor we couldn't just go out and eat every day off of other people preparing our meals. So everybody, my brothers and sisters, learned to cook, do the dishes, read recipes, and it didn't matter if you were a boy or a girl, it was just part of life. All six of us. In fact, we took this learning to the extreme, and my sister Renee and I invented a few recipes of our own. As children can get creative, we made magic milk, which consisted nothing more of milk, sugar, and food coloring. Now this is what I call putting those life skills we learned to the test. Nothing like putting into practice what we had learned, right? And not to leave a brother of mine out of the conversation, as he enjoyed carrots dipped in ketchup, and I enjoyed wrapping pickles and cheese with a spurt of mustard. To this day, there are several things I think could be a great tasting meal, and because of my upbringing, I don't have to rely on someone else to make it, as I have this life skill of cooking that was taught to me in my youth. The most recent thing that I sort of innovated and expanded upon was the tomato sandwich. Only instead of mayo, I replaced it with marinara sauce, toasted the bread, and while melting cheese, I prefer real parmesan, and added mushrooms and black olives, and a dash of thyme and oregano for seasoning. I think you will find it makes a killer sandwich. So, it never occurred to me outside of my residence that it was quite different from other homes. Especially with similar family roles, such as mine, where the dad worked and the mom took care of the children. Granted, though, in my family, my dad really enjoyed outdoor cooking, using the grill and such, while my mother was the one that baked our whole wheat bread and canned fruits and vegetables, oftentimes making jam with the fruit she canned. It was so good, and nothing like mom's home-baked bread and homemade jam to go with it. My mouth salivates as I bring up the memory. But my father was far from being a stranger in the kitchen. It just wasn't uncommon for him to fix us all a Sunday dinner like roast and potatoes, or spaghetti. And sometimes, since my dad spent a few years in Japan, he taught us to use chopsticks at a very young age, and making a few authentic Japanese dishes like tempura. As you can see, there was never this divide in gender roles of whose job it was to cook and clean in my household, but rather that of life skills that people should learn regardless of gender. And that is the way I think it should be. My mother wouldn't have had it any other way. She loved raising us and getting to see our first steps and hear our first words, while my dad largely missed out on those things. He was off providing for our family. So is a woman's place really in the kitchen? I would really only say, only if she wants to be, but no more so than a man. I am certainly allowed to share some responsibility of preparing a meal or three. There really is no gender role here that absolutely requires women to be in the kitchen, and I think that is an unfair stereotype that feminism feels that they have to fight against. As I have noticed as I have grown older, and whether or not I am wiser is to be debated, I am sure, outside of a sexist joke here or there. When was the last time someone actually meant it when they said, a woman's place is in the kitchen? More and more women are entering the workforce, 
and the stereotype is getting less and less frequent. I really don't think teaching survival skills like cooking is specifically a man's job nor a woman's job. Besides, it's very nice to be able to cook for yourself something that you might be craving without having to depend on someone else to get it for you. Unless, of course, it's a sandwich. Thanks all for listening. Bye for now.